Jeremiah chapter 8. Jeremiah chapter 8. Verse number 4 will start. Jeremiah 8, 4. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Shall they fall and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his course as the horse rusheth into the battle. Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming, but my people know not the judgment of the Lord. How do ye say we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it, the pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed, they are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord, and what wisdom is in them. Jeremiah is a prophet, a man called by God to preach to God's people. This, this was to the Jewish people. We're not those people. We can draw application from this. And with really without going back into all of their history, they, uh, they turned away from God. After the time of the uh, Solomon, the kingdom was split. It was, it was Israel and Judah, two kingdoms, a divided kingdom. And then from there, mostly just uh, turning away from him. God keeps giving them a chance. God keeps giving them an opportunity. And we could really judge them, but we could apply this to our country, more specifically our church, or even more specific than that, to our own individual life. He says, Thus saith the Lord, Shall they fall and not arise? When you, when you stumble and you fall down, don't you get up? Don't you stand back up? Maybe if you can. Shall he turn away and not return? If you, if you go the wrong, if you take the wrong turn, wherever you're at, grocery store, driving down the road, I'm sure none of you ever take turn the wrong way go in the wrong direction oh wait a second I need to go back the other way don't you turn around and go back the other way he's saying why then is this people of Jerusalem why are we backslidden why are we in a perpetual backsliding is our is our culture taking us forwards or backwards we're going backwards going backwards they hold fast deceit they refuse to return Inside their heart, they say, no, nope, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Everything's good with God. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, and they're, we're not. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented. What did Jesus come and preach? Repentance. Repentance isn't a, isn't a one-time thing. Salvation is a one-time thing, but we constantly need to repent of things that we have in our life even he says even the birds the the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming like certain birds they fly south at certain times and then they go back when it's time for uh 
to have offspring. Turtles, fish, don't fish, no. The times when it's time to turn in, I mean, they, fishermen, they're hard to catch at certain times, right? There's something that moves them. They observe God's law, is what he's saying. Everything, the sun, the moon, stars, the earth, they're all doing exactly what God has commanded them to do. It's all in order. Everything from the, the largest scale, things we can't even see, to the smallest detail. I don't, ha- I don't have to think to myself, <laughs> don't float away, because gravity, the law of gravity, it keeps me where I'm supposed to be. It works for me. Sometimes it's if I stumble, it's working too hard. All things work according to God's law except for people. We rebel against his law. My, my people know not the judgment of the Lord. But we say we're wise and the law of the Lord is with us. We say that we're Christians. We say that we're doing his works. And, and I, I know this. You're here tonight and there's a lot of people that aren't here. So I don't want to beat anybody up that came to church tonight. But God wants us to turn back to him. God wants us to keep our focus on him. And his, his time of judgment is coming. In Lamentations chapter 3, written by the same, the same preacher, Jeremiah, He talks about brokenness and having to go through sufferings, having to go through trials, having to go through uh, times that were awful for him. And he's preaching to, to God's people as they go through things and they never, they never see God. Think about what a blessed country Israel was during the days of David during the days of Solomon even after those guys and and they just they gave it all up God gave them everything God says in in this book I'm I'm in control of the rain so I can dry this place up I give you your food I give you everything that you need and you don't care Verse number, uh, verse number 19, Lamentations 3, 19, he, he's coming back around and he's trying to remind the people of the hope, remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, times that uh, wormwood is, was, is bitter. It's a bitter plant. You would use it to, it actually could be used as a dewormer. I hope none of you ever have worms. But it's bitter, and it it doesn't feel good, apparently, in the stomach. I've not tried it. My soul hath them still in remembrance, and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. To the soul that seeketh him, it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence because he hath borne it upon him. We have what we have because of God. It's because of the Lord's mercies that America is still America. It's because he has not yet withdrawn his hand that he's protecting us. There are countries a lot that hate us. They hate who we are. Uh, They want what we have. They want to destroy what we have. And God is holding 
his hand, shielding us, still protecting us. It's because of him that we're not consumed. Also, it's because of his mercy that he has not yet judged the entire world. He's waiting. He could come back at any second. And by his mercy, he's saying, there may be one more. There may be one more that comes. And when he does, I don't want to be backsliding against him. I don't want to be hard to the things of him. We can, we can go to church. These people were religious. These people went to the temple. These people sacrificed. These people followed his law, but it wasn't in their heart. And the difference is brokenness. There was no brokenness. They were never broken because they were hard. They were hardened. When is the last time that you were broken because Jesus went to the cross for you? When was the last time that you were broken because not only, not only did he give up the glory of heaven, I mean, he put on flesh, he came down to be born as a man, to live as a man. He did that for you. And then he raised himself from the grave. And then he said, I'll send my spirit to live with you. He cares that much about you. When's the last time you were broken for our country? Is this, is this the environment that you want others to? To come up in is this the America that you want to go down in history I don't think it is does that break you at all does it bother you at all it should bother us it should bother us the direction that society is go maybe you're not going that way but society in general is going that way the way that people act Maybe the way that you act. You should be broken at times for the way that you've acted. Not towards me, towards him. We owe him. He deserves it. He's, he's been broken for us. He's withholding judgment for us. And we're, all, we're just the same. No repentance no change. Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Psalm 51, 17, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Psalm 147, 3 says, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Isaiah 57, 15 says, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity. Those are some big words right there. If you stop and think about who he really is. The high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity. I can't even comprehend what that means. Whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble, to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Isaiah 66, 2 says, For all those things that mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord, but to this man I will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Contrite spirit just means broken, broken spirit. You don't, you don't have to be sobbing and weeping you could be but broken because of who God is and who we are Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven James 4 6 says he giveth more grace wherefore he saith God resisteth the proud but giveth grace to the humble obviously God cares much God hears much 
God sees much and God attends much to brokenness, broken people. Not just people who have messed up, but people that's hearts are broken for him and the things of him. Care about the things he cares about. Love the things that he loves. It's the first commandment of the first of the Ten Commandments. He says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Don't put anything before me. And Sunday is just a holiday to pretty much most people. God's not first. No one is broken by anything. God comes second. I might come to church on Sunday morning. And I think most of you do come. Because you're here tonight. Not everybody's here. There's people that are sick. There's some people that uh, want to be here tonight that can't be here tonight. And it breaks them because they can't come. Sometimes we don't realize what we have until we don't have it. But think about that. When, when's the last time that you were, you were broken for God? Broken for the things of God? Jesus, when he was here, the Bible says uh, countless times he was moved with compassion. Jesus, it moved him. Certain things moved him. He wept. Before he went to the cross, he cried, as it were, great drops of blood. He was broken for us. Broken for the world that Lazarus was coming back to. Broken for souls that needed a shepherd. Souls that needed somebody to help them along the way. It's not just about it's not just about going out and bossing people around and telling them how to live their life, but there's so many people out there that we see that are just living, they're just, they're wandering aimlessly like, like blind people in the darkness. They have no idea what they're doing, what they're supposed to be doing, where they're going. They make their life a wreck and it moves him. It should move us. We should be broken for those people. Broken. One day... He will withhold his staying of judgment. He will judge. In Joel chapter 2, it says that that day will come and, and, and he will judge in the valley of decision. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. And God will heap out judgments to people. For the way that they have lived. That should move us. We should be broken because that day is coming. There are going to be horrific things that come. Hell is a real place. As much as most people would like to wash it away. It's only for bad people. It's, it's a figure of speech. It's a curse word. It's a real place. And real people, uh, good people, people that we know, will be sent there because they didn't choose him. That should break us. We should be broken. The, the altars or the steps or the front pew should have marks in them where people come and pray because they're broken. For lost souls for family members, for our country, for something, sometimes for ourselves. We need to repent. We need to be broken. We need to be humble. God has a way to humble us. I'd rather, I'd rather listen to my mom and dad's uh, speech, them saying, hey, do what I asked you to do, so I don't have to give you a reminder. I know what that was code for. I'd rather listen to the Lord's uh, words than to have him give me a, a reminder. Because he can humble us. 
He can break us. I don't want him to have to do that. You don't want him to have to do that. Whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Sometimes chastening brings about brokenness, brings tears. We need to be a broken people. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. We ask that you would help us to, to be broken for the things that you care about, for the things that you love. Lord, just use us uh, the way that you see fit. We'll praise you and give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.